Welcome back to the Ask Murph Show. And today we're talking about seven ways sellers sabotage the sale of their own home. Now, you might think this is kind of crazy, but this happens all the time. As a professional, 15 years experience, I come into a house, sold over a thousand properties, and I get so many sellers telling me, no, 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 this is what we should do. No, 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 I'm not gonna spend money on that. No, 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 no. And it's like, what? Wait a minute here. I've sold over a thousand properties. I've invested in hundreds of my own properties. I know the market maybe just a little bit better because I'm doing this every single day. So here's the seven things that I hear from home sellers who maybe have sold a house five, seven, 10, 20 years ago. Number one is, wait, 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 what's the price? No, 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 it needs to be more. Now, let me tell you, when we go into pricing a property for any seller, we do as much due diligence as we possibly can. We go out and look at properties if we haven't seen them already. We're going on the internet and making sure that we understand all the comparable sales. We're factoring in the, the current market dynamics. We're paying attention to the buyers that we're out showing houses to right now that are buying similar homes to the home that we're gonna sell. There's so many different factors that goes into pricing a home. It's not just look it up on the internet, here's the address, oh, here's what the value is. So when the seller is thinking about, wait, 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 I need more money, you have to understand the dynamics that go into pricing a house before you just determine that you need more money. So that's one of the biggest ways that a seller sabotages the sale of their own home. Poor preparation. Oftentimes, I tell every one of my sellers, hey, if you're gonna do anything, you have to prepare your house before you sell it, and then you have to prepare your home before any showings happen. So if you get a call and it says, ding, I'm gonna have a showing at one o'clock, you need to prepare your house because how your home looks directly reflects the price that you're going to get for it. So one of the ways that I see sellers sabotage the sale of their home and especially the bottom line sales price of their house is by not properly preparing the home before the market or before a showing. Number three, making it difficult to show. Now, when a buyer wants to see a house, they wanna see a house, especially if you're in the luxury bracket, which would be, let's say, 500, 600, 800, or a million. Now, a lot of times what happens is, is that you're having people that are coming to look at your house from another state, because they're relocating. You're having people having to look at your home in the evening because both the parents work or both the um, adults work, or maybe, you're having someone that's gonna call you early in the morning on a Saturday because that's the only time they can get out to look at houses because for the rest of the day, they need to run around with their kids for sports activities. There's a reason why a buyer's asking to see a house at a certain time. You as a seller can't sabotage the sale of your home by not allowing people to come through at times that might be less convenient for you because if you're trying to sell your house, your number one job is to be convenient to that buyer. And so that was one of the big um, sabotages that I see from home sellers. Now what's number four? Hovering over a showing. Now, yeah, the stories I can tell you about people hovering over showing. Number one, the home owner will not leave the house. They refuse to leave the house. And a couple different times I've heard, they refuse to leave the house because they, who knows the house better than them, so they wanna give a guided tour to the buyer. Well, I can tell you this. There's not a buyer on earth that wants a guided tour from the homeowner of the property they're considering purchasing. So that's not a good idea. The other thing that I've heard and I've experienced is the homeowner is going to drive around the block as if they're gone and then they're going to park in the front yard or they're gonna park behind a tree or they're gonna walk the dog and just sit across the street on the park bench. Let me tell you, eventually the buyer and the agent will realize, hmm, something's a little suspicious. Those things are not helping you give the buyer a sense of comfort when they're walking through your home and trying to pay attention to your home and decide if your home is the right home for them to buy. So don't sabotage the showing of your own house. Number five, not disclosing or denying repairs. Now, this is something that your agent will strongly advise you don't do. Number one, because the agent is responsible for full disclosure of any material facts that they're aware of. So it's their job and their license on the line 
for them to help you disclose any material facts that you know about your property that will hinder the enjoyment of your of that property for the future buyer. So now if you decide that you're not going to share the fact that you had water in your basement last winter because there was so much snow and the melt was so fast that you got water in your basement. That happens all the time. But if you're not willing to disclose that, that could hinder the sale of your property because um, unfortunately maybe for you, your agent, if you told them that or if they're aware of that, they have no other choice but then to disclose that you have had water in your basement because it's just the right thing to do. So don't sabotage the sale of your property by not disclosing that you have issues, repairs, or things that happened in the past like a tornado or a hurricane or you know new shingles or hail damage or whatever it might be. Now, the number six thing that people do to sabotage the sale of their property is they become penny pinchers. Hey, I get it. I'm probably one of the most conservative people you ever meet. I get I don't want to spend $7,000 on a new furnace, even though this furnace barely runs or has uh, very hazardous emissions of, of gases that comes out of it. Or, hey, I don't want to replace the roof. The insurance company won't pay to replace it. Why should I replace it? Or, hey, that window, yeah, it doesn't open very well, but you know what? I've lived with it for 10 years. Why can't they live with it? What I will tell you is pinching pennies is going to cost you thousands because the buyer will come in and they will say, okay, you know what? We just did our home inspection and we realized that you have this, 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 and this, which you already know your agent told you about, told you to fix it because it would be cheaper for you to fix it than for the buyer to have you refix it or the buyer to ask for compensation for those necessary repairs because the buyer is always gonna ask for double or triple what it might cost you to actually get it done. So don't pinch pennies. Listen to your agent. An experienced agent will help you make thousands, not lose thousands. And number seven, don't be unrealistic, okay? The, you have to understand the number seven way to sabotage the sale of your house is to get emotionally attached to the fact that your home is going to sell for X price. At the end, if you're looking to sell your home and you feel or your agent feels or an educated advisor feels that your home is, you've received an offer that is market value and you think you need to push, 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 push to get more and you end up losing that buyer, just know the next buyer that comes through will probably pay less. It's a statistical fact. Very rarely will you get more money on offer number two, three, four, or five if you're on the market for longer and longer and longer and longer. Usually, the first offer is the best offer. And again, this comes from a lot of experience of selling over a thousand properties and hundreds of my own investment properties. The first offer, mathematically speaking, based on my experience, is usually one of the best offers, if not the best offer, because it comes in in the shortest amount of time and it, you don't have to wait longer and longer and longer and longer and longer for the next offer. And the longer that you have to wait, the less money you're gonna get, and the more people are gonna say, well, what's wrong with the property? Well, what's wrong with the property is that the seller is being unrealistic. So these are the seven things that sellers do to sabotage the sale of their home. Now, this is serious. If you have questions, and you don't wanna be the one sabotaging the sale of your own home, reach out, because we're here to help.